be able to execute the fundamentals on offense, defense, and special teams. They're going to run a pick, and Rutgers is not fooled. And, yeah. and, and then do it over and over and over, and over again. They're coming and blocked. Because the team that does it better is usually the team that wins. Live from Quaker Steak and Lube on US-1 in Edison, this is the Kyle Flood Show. Your chance to talk with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. The Kyle Flood Show is also brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world, and by Pepsi. Live in the moment. The beat starts at Pepsi.com. Pepsi, live for now. To be part of the show, call 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Now, let's go live to Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison. Here's the voice of the Scarlet Knights, Chris Carlin. Need a place? Scarlet Knights back in action this week off of a bye. Welcome, everybody, to the Kyle Flood Show as Rutgers prepares for the third-ranked Michigan State Spartans who come to Piscataway this coming Saturday night, undefeated 5-0 on the year. Rutgers at 2-2. This is their second Big Ten conference matchup of the season. Chris Carlin alongside former Scarlet Knight Eric LeGrand, the Scarlet Knight blocking out the camera, (laughs) and the Rutgers interim head coach, and that's Norris Wilson. Coach, how are you? I'm fantastic, Chris. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And Eric, how are you? I'm good, Coach. How you doing? I caught your radio show. Hey, I, oh, pre- I appreciate you listening out, Coach. You know, I enjoy doing that radio show, breaking out all college football. I know you had time for that. If we talk to each other long enough, we can get rid of Tyler. Hey. Well, I was going to oh. say, you don't need me if you don't. I, I still got half a sandwich over here I could finish up. <laughs> well, you got some uh, good news today in that Leontay Carew has been reinstated to the program. So, um, first of all, with Leontay back, uh, have you had the chance to talk to him? How did the team take the news? What's been the uh, overall reaction as far as getting Leontay back? I'll answer all those questions in a row. Okay. Okay. But there's bigger news than Leontay Carew coming back. Okay. There's there's bigger news. Do you know the flip drill that we do uh, pregame at the end Mm -hmm. where the guys get on the ground and flip and do the whistle? Focus drill. I did it today. My body hurts. You did it, Coach? Oh, I was all over. I was flipping and down on the ground. The head coach <laughs> thought I had a heart attack and having too many sausages at breakfast. But I'm, I'm injured. You're injured. I'm yeah. injured. Okay, so now well, well, no, we're going to have our uh, uh, Lord of the Rings Return of the King moment. Leontay Carew is back, yes. Um, and we're excited to have him back. Uh, Leontay's obviously been a, a very good player for our program. I have not had an opportunity to speak with Leontay. Uh, he was not with us today uh, in meetings or practice. Um, so I know Coach Campanile. Coach Campanile had an opportunity to talk with him. And so I, I'm sure he's excited to be back. We're excited to have him back. And I expect that he'll be with us tomorrow. Now, if that's the case, it's, I would say it's probably, at least I would assume that it's probably pretty difficult to tell if where he is, if he could go on Saturday all of that involved, do you have any sense of that, or is that just something you'll find out when he's on the practice field? Well, we'll find that out on the practice field, and we won't you know, get a gauge of where his conditioning is and if, if the things that he did while he was away to keep himself in shape. Uh, and then just his overall retention of, of the things we do offensively, and I'm Coach Campanelli do a good job giving him up to, getting him up to speed on what we're doing uh, in the game plan this week. And – We'll just make an uh, honest assessment of where he, we think he can fit in, if at all, for this weekend. Do you think it'll be easier for someone like him as a veteran of, of the program to get come in mid when week is Thursday? You know how it is on Thursdays. You're going over stuff and then getting into a Friday practice. It's not like you got the Tuesday and Wednesday in there where you can get majority of the package of the game plan in there. Do you think it'll be easy for him to handle that? With our current schedule, yes, because Thursday is now a, 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 a longer deal where you get – everything you got on Tuesday and everything you got on Wednesday. So he'll get an opportunity to, if not run it, to see it run and, and try to get a mental picture of what we're trying to get done. And then we'll come out and practice again on Friday, and he'll get more prep time and film time, and he'll get some meeting time with, with his coach. 
and I think he should, he should be fine. He, he's a bright player. Uh, he's played a lot of football. He understands the game and, and how to attack the defense. And so we'll just take it one day at a time, and we'll start with tomorrow. Just generally speaking, when you have a player that hasn't been on the field, yes, they might be working out, staying in shape, doing everything they have to do in that regard, but not, as they say, in game shape maybe for a couple of weeks. Does it take more than a couple of days for – the average player or, or just players in general to get back and get ready before they could get in a game? Well, it depends on how much you – I think it's going to depend on how much you expect that player to do in the game. Mm -hmm. um, if you had a, just a small package for him to, to go out and, and run four, five, six plays and, and be able to give him a break and the other players that have been around can go out and, and play also. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, it's going to take some time to get in the game shape. There's a, a, there's a big difference between practice shape and game shape. Uh, just You move a little faster. Uh, everyone's playing a little bit faster during the game than they do in practice as much as you, you uh, emphasize going full speed. So you know, I'm sure there's going to have to be some readjusting for him, but I think he should readjust fine. I know you've been asked this a lot, Coach, about take, you know, the, deep, the deep ball and taking it you know, off, off, over the top. And As a coach, as an offensive side, are you happy to have another threat back who really threatens that deep ball in the passing game? Definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm sure with the news coming back that they, they may be going back and looking at some film mm -hmm. of when he played in his first two games and see what routes he did run. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't hit the cough button. The guy's going to kill yeah, me over there. Yeah, big red button there marked <laughs> cough. That's all right. It's upside down, so I couldn't see it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, we, we're excited about having him back, but we, we weren't scared to, to take deep shots with the other kids out there. So, Leontay is a legitimate deep threat, and if the opportunity presents itself, we may, we may use that this coming Saturday. Well, it's certainly good news to have him back on the field, and uh, as far as your team is concerned now at this point, you have a, a situation where you're coming off the bye week. So, first of all, for the players themselves, how did you handle that schedule-wise? How much time did they get away, and how much time were they uh, – practicing, working toward getting ready for the following week, that stuff. Okay. We practiced uh, last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so they were off uh, from the coaches on, on Sunday and Monday, but they had to come in for academic uh, requirements and, and a visit with the uh, medical staff if they had to get treatment on injuries or, or things of that nature. And we, had, uh, uh, we were in just helmets on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, we wore shoulder pads, and we got some good work against each other. And we got a jump start on the things we wanted to game plan for Michigan State. Uh, they were off again Saturday. Uh, then we came in, and we flipped our schedule a little bit. We had been off on Mondays. Um, no, we had been off on Sundays and practiced on Mondays. But this week, we practiced on Sundays, on Sunday, and the kids were off again Monday. So well, I thought they'd been pretty fresh uh, uh, all week long. We've had three good days of practice. Uh, we've gone against the defense each day uh, this week just to continue to have speed versus speed. And so tomorrow we'll, we'll keep sawing and chopping at it, making sure we get the, the game plan down the way we want it. And same thing on Friday. We'll keep preparing right up till kickoff on Saturday night. As a coach, how did you get to handle the, the bye week off? You know, if you give the players off Tuesday, I mean, on Friday, Saturday, come back Sunday, how do you get to handle those Friday and Saturdays? You get to – Relax a little bit, or are you in there all pretty much all day long still? Well, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday after practice, we all jumped in our cars and went recruiting. Ah, so we, we, were out, side of it. we were out recruiting. And then Thursday I went recruiting, and I got on a plane and flew to Jack, uh, Florida, uh, went and saw some, some kids and saw a high school football game and came back Saturday and, and would have seen some games on Saturday, but the uh, inclement weather. Uh, precluded me from being able to go see some games, and they were canceled. So that was an opportunity to be home. When, you're, um, when you have your younger players in your program, and especially the, the freshmen or, or the, uh, the redshirt freshmen who are going through a season for the first time on the collegiate level, having a bye week after four weeks during the year, is that good for them just because it's kind of been nonstop for them for the past, what, 10, 12 weeks almost, 10 weeks about. It's good for them. Give, get an a good opportunity for them to uh, gather themselves and, and catch up on any 
academic work that they need to get caught up on. And also during that time, because they have spent so much time as, as service personnel, given the looks of the opponent, they got some opportunities to just go out and play football. There was time set aside just for those players that are developing right now where they could just go out and play and, and we could see where they are athletically and, and with the, the knowledge that they have of what we do on offense or defense. And I actually would, would pull them up in the morning and watch them just to see how the kids are developing. And there were some good things put on film on both sides of the ball. How, how important was it to get some of these guys back now that are, you know, have, have had injuries, you know, and trying to heal them up a little bit? It, it's been real good. It's, it's, it's helped in, increase the depth of the kids that we're going to have uh, on the quote-unquote travel squad. Uh, now, some of them had to get some rust knocked off because they've been away for yeah. – some of them have been away for an extended period of time. So they have to come back and relearn some things. And uh, as a coach, sometimes you may get frustrated with it, but you need to understand they, they're not in there doing it every day like the kids that have been practicing. So you just have to take a step back and, and reteach it to them and, and, and sprinkle them in where you can with it and give them op an opportunity to succeed. Your telephone number is 855-FLOOD-44. We want you to be a part of the program tonight. You can also tweet your questions for Coach Wilson at Rutgers Radio. That's at Rutgers Radio. Get your questions in, and we will get them on the air and ask the coach, uh, especially about the upcoming matchup with Michigan State this week. Uh, let's get into a couple of position groups, Coach. First of all, your group, the running backs, uh, pretty consistent. Josh Hicks uh, has had a, a terrific season so far in terms of yards per carry. Uh, and all of your group, for the most part, have been pretty productive. So how would you evaluate that group as a whole at this point? I think they're doing well, actually. And I, I'm not trying to, to pat myself on the back. It's not, a, it's not me that's doing it. It's them. I give them the information as best I can and just let them go out and play. I haven't seen a, a day where they've had a, a, just a bad practice. They come out, and, and I, all I ask from them is to let, let's go out and try to make it perfect. Let's try to be missed assignment free. And if we're going to be out there playing, let's give our best effort. And I've gotten that from all of them. Uh, no matter how many reps they've received, they go out and, and they run those reps full speed. And I just try to do a good job of figuring out who hasn't run a specific play so they all get the same reps at the plays that are on the scripts. So Paul and Josh and Robert and Justin and Sam, you know, those are the four guys that I have during the week. They – they go out and they try to do their jobs, and, and I'm really excited to be around them every day. And, Coach, I know you, you take each week, week by week, and game by game, but as we're talking position groups, how important was it to get that O-line and D-line one-on-one rep, you know, with the ones-on-one, -on -one, good on good, when, especially when you got the brunt of this schedule coming up, when you got some of those big boys that are going to be coming in town and you guys also going on the road? It, it's really good. Uh, sometimes, for whatever reason, you know, the kids that are running the, the, the look teams, aren't playing with the speed that, that uh, you're going to see on Saturday. So mm -hmm. if you can get your defense out to run a few cards for you, or if you can just get your defense out and go against your defense, just the speed of it is snapping off on twist and uh, a full-speed pass rush or a full-speed pressure. Those things help the players just to stay in tune. It's kind of like a, 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 hit, a hitter that's been away on the DL in baseball. He's got to come back and get his timing back. So mm -hmm. if you can keep your timing just – on how fast the game's going to be, that's really good. We will delve into a whole lot more over the next 45 minutes or so at 855-FLOOD-44. Give us a call. We will get you involved in the program. Let's step aside for our first break of the night. Interim Coach Norris Wilson joining us for the final week on the Kyle Flood Show. Stay with us. We're coming right back. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar that's open all year round, even in the winter. Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size, dining in or to go. Quaker Steak and Lou, 561 Route 1 in Edison, 732-777-WING. At AT&T, we're all about the perks, like getting $300 credit per line when you switch to AT&T with a smartphone trade-in and purchase of any smartphone on AT&T Next. That's three perks in one. Get all the perks when you switch to the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. 
AT&T, mobilizing your world. Limited time. Each $300 requires supporting eligible purchase activation and trading. $100 bill credit within 90 days. $200 trading credit or promo card. Taxes, fees, restrictions apply. Claim based only on national carrier's average 4G LTE signal strength. See store for details. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Consider the cup holder. There's probably one feeling empty next to you right now. No Pepsi, no hope. Just look at it, won't you? All across the country, cup holders are being neglected. Instead of Pepsi, they're being filled with loose change or crumpled up receipts. But you can help. Get a Pepsi and refresh a cup holder's life. Our thirsts are counting on it. In fact, I'm having one right now. Ah, that is refreshing. Pepsi, refresh yourself. Refill your cup holder. <laughs> Hey, Rutgers season ticket holders, are you tired of sitting on those hard bleachers with no back support? Then we have a deal for you. For a limited time, you can reserve a night cushion for only $60 for the season. That's less than $9 a game. Permanently attached to your ticket location, night cushions provide padded comfort for your back and bottom that's second to none. So don't wait. Visit nightcushion.com. That's nightcushion with a K, dot com. Or call 800-729-0445 to reserve today. We're back at Quaker Steak in Lube in Edison, New Jersey for this week's edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Rutgers back in action Saturday night, 8 p.m. under the lights at High Point Solution Stadium. It is the blackout game when the Scarlet Knights host the third-ranked Michigan State Spartans from East Lansing. We will get into that in just a few more moments. You know, during the break, you're, you're bringing up this drill again, and you seem a little annoyed that I am not more impressed by the fact that you were doing it. So explain, first of all, which one is it? Because I didn't know exactly which drill it was that you're talking about. Well, if there was more space here, I'd do it for you. Don't move any tables. Uh, okay, it's a drill that the players do at the end of stretch. Uh, coach Cole, our strength coach, gets them all up and lets them know which way everyone's going to flip. We also do it on game day. So they get up and they start clapping it up. And when he blows a whistle, a specific oh. body movement has to be done. Mm -hmm. And I was flawless <laughs> in my execution of the drill. <laughs> I did not uh, alert the head coach that I would be laying on the ground. So he was scared momentarily, more for the turf than me. But <laughs> when the drill was over, I made it to my feet. And um, <laughs> only half the practice was gone. So, um, <laughs> oh. All right, now I know what you're talking about. Okay. You know now I, now yeah, you know the drill. Hands down, dive down oh, on the no, ground, yeah. flip over I, that I, hole. That's right. Uh, I did it. Okay. Hey, hey Chris, I can attend to this. It's, it's not an easy thing. You know, the focus that we used to do at the end of mat drills, too, when you're dead tired mm. and they make you do it and try to focus and you get all messed up. So, Coach. I give props to you, man, getting down there and doing that. I don't know if I flipped the right way. Though. <laughs> it's not on film. I tried to get him to film it. Well, I thought we said it was flawless. It was flawless. Well, flawless wouldn't be flipping the right way. The other 104 way. guys went the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's flawless when they weren't looking. <laughs> well, I hand it to you. That's pretty impressive. Oh, man. That kind of leads nicely into our first Twitter question of the night. This one uh, from at Malin Esquire. How much have you enjoyed serving as interim coach doing this show, facing the press, working the game day? I, I have a feeling that there are probably some different answers to that question as far as what he talked about. So why don't you take them one at a time? Doing the, the show has been fantastic. Um, my family comes down to, to support. I think it's more because my middle daughter loves the ribs um, <laughs> other than supporting dad. Uh, you all have been great to me. The press... Has been has and I, they asked me the same question today. I, I don't know if you were standing there or not. You know they they've been good. They haven't tried to misquote me or trap me with any questions. Uh, game day, you know, game day is my probably the best day of the week. And my the best part of every day is for me is practice. I love going to practice. Um, it's just you know you're out there. You get to see how your kids are, are getting better. Uh, it's unfortunate the circumstance that has pushed me into this situation, but I, I've tried to do. The, the, the best job that could be done under the circumstances and you just got to take it as it comes and answer the questions as best you can and, and show up here 
uh, next to one good man and one man of questionable integrity. Uh, so <laughs> it's terrible he'd say that about you, Eric. I know, and, right? <laughs> uh, but I, it's it's been fun, um, and it, it's it's had its ups and downs. A down at at, at uh, out in State College and a up at home against uh, Kansas, and we're looking for another up this weekend against uh, Michigan State. I I know you said that you that you know your favorite moments are going out to practice and also the game day, but anything in in that particular realm is that is your favorite moment. That you can that you can point out being a head coach over this past three weeks. Yeah, uh, I'd say uh, probably uh, walking across the field Saturday uh, after we beat Kansas, me and hey. Cecil. Um, no, he's down on the sideline for game day. So and so that that was a, a, a good feeling for him. And on the flip side, as far as Coach Flood's concerned, he. Uh, during this suspension has not made comments to the press. That's part of the agreement on the suspension. So just how is he doing? I mean, he, he's still running practice and all that. Uh, but at the same time, I would think for a head coach, it's got to be pretty difficult to be away from your team on game day. I think that's more than pretty difficult. I think it's, it's uh, something that you would probably not want to ever experience as a coach. Um, he's been, other than that, he, I think he's been great. Uh, he's come in every day, like I've said before, he comes out, he gets out of the same side of the bed every day. He's come in. He's positive. Uh, he makes corrections. He makes suggestions. He puts plans together. And every day's been the same. You know, it's the 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 day to day during the week hasn't changed. He just goes and and does his deal. And for the press engagements that he would have that I have to stand in for, I, I just go and do them. How much will your routine change after this week? Will it still be pretty much the same thing, or will a lot change? I will uh, lose my post-practice press conference and my daily uh, tongue lashing that I get from Haseem Phillips about <laughs> how I uh, have said the wrong thing. But uh, he's been good with me. Um, and Coach will be back doing the press deals, uh, you know, the conference after the games and the conferences off during the week and the, the Big Ten media call and coming back out here and enjoying the people that come out to support the program. So. This will be – this is the end of my limited engagement here at Quaker Steak and Lube, and Coach Flood will be back in this same seat next week. That he will, but you have filled in quite nicely yes. in this role, no doubt. Plenty of entertainment to be sure. That's, that's certain. <laughs> <laughs> we have our first phone call of the night. Let's check in with Michael in Columbus, Ohio. He is yeah. on the Kyle Flood Show. Michael, how are you? I'm doing good. Fire away, Michael. Hello? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Am I on the air? What? Yes. Michael, you're on the air. Go ahead. I I'm sorry. There's a little static. I can't hear. All right. Let's try to we'll get him to call back and see if we can get a better line for him in just a few moments. Uh, let's get back to some of the okay. individual uh, places on the offense. And Coach... Um, First of all, Chris Laviano, he's through the first significant part uh, of a season, four games, um, a third of it, uh, outside of a potential bowl game. So when you look at Chris and how he's played, where's the evaluation been? How, do you, how have you felt like uh, that has really taken place? I think Chris has done a lot more good than bad. He's had some turnovers. He's had some, some, some questionable judgments on some balls he's He's thrown, but he's also put us in a lot of good plays, put us in a lot of good situations, converted. We're converting to um, at 50% on third down. So he's, he's a huge part of that. He has to dissect what he, he believes the defense is going to try to do to us, and he's had some options to go to a few things, and I think he's done a fantastic job with it, and I, I think he's done a good job leading the unit when he's out there. And during the bye week, as we were talking about before, going out one-on-ones with, uh, with the goods, how is it that you, you know, develop some of the pressures? Do you run just Rutgers defense or you run a bunch of mixed stuff at him with that number one defense out there flying around so we can see different looks? Well, it, it gets a mix of both. Um, it probably gets a lot more of, of the pressures from Rutgers that are, are going to be different than we would get from uh, Michigan State. But it's the rules of what the, the, the players have to do don't change. So if, if you're supposed to block the first down lineman from inside out, you block the first down lineman from inside out. If you've got the backside backer, 
and, and blitz pick up. You got the backside backer. So it, it, it continues to help train the eyes of all the players and help, helps them to get their techniques where we want them to be so they can try to play perfect on Saturday. As far as Hayden's concerned, as his backup, uh, there are only so many reps to go around in practice, as we know, and uh, the majority of the first-team reps, or really all the first-team reps, go with the starter. For a guy that started the first game because of the circumstances there, how much more difficult does it become for him now to try to, engulf, I guess, mentally engulf the offense and, and understand it without maybe getting as many reps? Well, he gets, a, he gets looks at all the plays, though. He yeah. gets looks at all the pressures, uh, all the stunts, uh, all the coverages. So it's not like he's, he's just standing on the side the entire time. It's not like the NFL where the starting quarterback is going to get every rep mm -hmm. and the backup just watches the film. He's out there. He's, he's running a group, and he'll get some looks with the first-team line in there. Uh, and and with whichever running back happens to be there, which could happen at any point in the game. He could turn around. It could be any of the four of them. So Hayden gets a lot of work. And Hayden gets a lot of opportunities to continue to grow as a quarterback, and he, he's doing that. I know we were talking about the younger guys earlier in the, in the program. I want to know, how did the, the developmental period go for these younger guys during this, this bye week off? I know you get some extra time with them. How did that go, did you think? I thought it went well. Um, the, the younger coaches had a chance to stay out with them, uh, the GAs, and, and they – went against one another, and, and they, I think they had a good time doing it, being able to call defense and things of that nature. Uh, the kids kept responding and played hard, had opportunities to put on film how they were developing and, and what they were as a player. So I, I thought it was good for them, and it, it was a good opportunity for us to see where they are. Let's try that phone call again. Michael in Columbus, Ohio is back on the line on the Kyle Flood Show. Michael, how are you? Hi. Um, yes, my name is Michael. I'm calling from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I'm in the middle of Buckeye country. Mm -hmm. I'm a longtime Rutgers fan. Um, I wanted to ask the uh, Coach Wilson about um, the use of Janarian Grant on offense. Um, I know everyone knows he's a dynamic player in the uh, return game, but I think he's been underused um, as a, an athlete to try to get him the ball in space. Um, on offensive plays. Coach? Underused. I, well, that's subjective. Uh, I think that we do a good job each week trying to get some things in the package specifically for Janarian. Uh, if we have uh, more than two receivers on the field, he, he's definitely going to be out there the majority of the time. And there are times when we only have two receivers on the field where he's out there. Uh, We've got some, some – we've run some uh, speed sweeps with him. Uh, he's caught big balls this year as a slot receiver, and, and last year he also caught a lot of big balls as a slot receiver. So he can't get every ball, and with the, the running game that we have and with the other receivers that we have, uh, he gets a number of targets each game, and, and he does a good job taking advantage of those targets that we have for him. Is it on – do you think – Janarian, you know, as his development as a wide receiver, you know, not becoming one of those number one or two guys, you know, just using them in the slot situation, or is that a game plan to just use them in a slot situation? Do you want to put him out there as a number one or number two receiver? Well, we, we've done this year where he's been out there. We go out in 21 personnel, mm -hmm. two backs and a tight end with two wideouts, and he's been out there playing receiver. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've taken steps to teach him more than just slot receiver to let him learn how to be the Z receiver. Uh, the receiver that's in motion the majority of the time. Uh, Janarian plays hard. He impressed me this camp with the fact that he took it upon himself this camp to make himself a better blocker. And he was being physical and violent at the point of attack. And I told him every time I saw it on film when we got together in unit meetings how much myself and the rest of the running backs appreciated the effort he was putting in as a blocker. Uh, anybody can go out there and just run the routes and hope the ball's thrown to him. It's, it's what you do when, when you're not expecting the ball and you know it's a run and you're playing receiver and you're going to go put your face on somebody and knock them back and hold the point. And he's done a great job doing that in practice and in games. And to the layman, it looks like his hands, he's really improved in that area. He's catching the ball better. Uh, he, he's, he, he's working at it. He's working at making himself a better player, turning his weaknesses into strengths, and it's helping us offensively and as a team. 
All right, we will take a, st a time out, come back. We've got time for plenty of phone calls over the next half hour. You can also tweet your questions. I failed to mention it earlier. Of course, if you're here in attendance, we've got a microphone right up in front. Our man Jimmy in the black Rutgers jacket is uh, ready to get your question in. So come on up front, and we will get you on as well. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Thanks to Mountain Dew Kickstart, three bros are about to become more than just a bunch of couch brotatoes. Hi! The energizing blast of dew and juice is entering their mouths. Soon they'll be sliding across the dance floors if it was strewn with the peels of bro nanas. Then this trio of bromeos will recite sweet broetry into the ears of any dame that will listen. These guys are professionals. Let's do this! We're coming, world! It all starts with a kick. Mountain Dew Kickstart with dew, juice, and just the right amount of kick. Now available in six flavors that taste good. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and barn that's open all year round, even in the winter. Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size, dining in or to go. Quaker Steak and Loop 561 Route 1 in Edison 732-777-WING This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. You know where to tune in for the game, but do you know how to bring the game home to you? When it comes to commemorating the experience, IMGproducts.net has you covered. IMGproducts.net is the place to go for official programs and yearbooks from NCAA championships, conference tournaments, and many of the nation's top universities. Relive games and championships for years to come with quality programs containing stats, behind-the-scenes stories, history, and much, much more. IMGproducts.net. We've got you covered. Looking for the best trained in the electrical business? Look no further. Our members of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 456, go through a five-year nationally recognized apprenticeship program along with OSHA safety certifications, producing the best trained and most up-to-date electricians in the area. Fiber optics, high voltage, lighting retrofits, solar energy, healthcare facilities, school construction, data centers. We do it all. We are also proud to be one of the first building trades locals to be recognized with a drug-free workplace program. We at Local Union 456 are like Coach Flood in the Scarlet Knight, trained and proven to get the job done. We are back on the Kyle Flood Show. Rutgers preparing for Michigan State this coming weekend. It is the blackout game this week at High Point Solution Stadium Saturday night, 8 o'clock on Big Ten Network. Interim coach Norris Wilson joining us for the final time. And well, thank you for listening on WCTC 1450 in New Brunswick and, of course, on scarletknights.com as well. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit of defense for a few minutes. Eric brought up the defensive line earlier. How about the linebackers? You know, you've had uh, a couple of guys who I think are, are real interesting stories, really all three. Steve Longa, first of all made that shift back to the outside on the weak side and seemingly is everywhere. He, he seems, you know, that's been a position on the Rutgers defense that has been very productive over the years. Kasim Green comes to mind uh, in recent years. How do you evaluate how Steve has done in that transition? I think Steve's done a great job with uh, transitioning back out to a uh, wheel linebacker. Steve works at it. When I say he works at it, um, you know, the coaches, we do it 12, 14, 15 hours a day, and we're only allowed to be around the players uh, four hours a day and they have to have a day off. But there aren't many days where you won't walk past the meeting room and you see Steve longer down watching film on his own, uh, prepping himself, uh, looking at his opponent, uh, probably and sometimes he's looking at practice to see what he could have done better. Uh, he knows that just putting in the, uh, the required or minimum time isn't going to make him a better player. So... He'll stop in and he'll visit with Coach Frazier on what he has to do to get better, what, what he could have done better at practice, or if there's any keys that he needs to look at when he's viewing film on his own. Steve plays physical. Uh, he enjoys the game. He was joking with me the other day about if something should happen, uh, if uh, he could come and, and run the ball uh, and, and, and be a tailback. Uh, I was all for it, but Coach Frazier <laughs> nixed it. So it's not my fault, Steve. Um, we need, he's, he's too valuable on defense to take a – take a chance on him getting hurt and running the football. So Steve's a good player, and he's been a good player since he got here, and he's improving. Uh, he's, he's, 
he embraces a, a leadership role on the defense, and, and we're really happy that he's with us. And now as we're talking defense, we have to talk about the defensive backs. You know, they were young coming into the season. They saw a lot of looks with different spread offenses and also, you know, some pro style. And now did you get to throw any more looks at them during the bye week to get them ready for this bulk of the season coming up? Well, they had an opportunity to go back and do some fundamental work with Coach Rossi and, and Coach Darrell Wilson. Um, and just with the speed aspect, you know, with seven on seven against the offense mm -hmm. where it's faster than – uh, against the scouts and some team uh, third down things against the offense where it, it's faster than, than against the scouts. They, they got a lot of good work this week. They got a lot of good work last week as well. Uh, they got to do some one-on-ones against one, one another, work on some man coverage skills. So uh, they, they're getting better, and, and I think both Coach Rossi and Coach, Coach Wilson will tell you that, that they're trying their, their tails off, trying to, trying to improve and, and be the best player they can be for game days. We have a question from one of our young fans here in attendance, a Quaker Steak and Lubin Edison. Young man, what's your name? My name is Raymond. Raymond, where are you from? Edison, New Jersey. Well, okay. right nearby then. Raymond, what's your question for Coach Wilson? What do you guys do on game day to get ready for the game? What do we do on game day to get ready? Well, every player is different. Uh, the, the collective things that we do would be this. Uh, it's going to be a night game this week, so we'll get up and we'll have – We'll have breakfast, and uh, then we have some meetings, and then they'll, we'll have a, a run-through of some sorts and go and just keep preparing for the game. Um, then we'll come together and, and, and have a pregame meal. But once they all get to the stadium and the Scarlet Walk is done and they get in the locker room, each kid prepares differently. Uh, some kids might pull their iPad out and, and just go back through the play. Some kids might listen to some music. Uh, some kids might just sit and focus on what they have to do and, and their assignments. Um, some kids have to get different things warmed up. You know, the guys with, with, with lower leg uh, ailments will go in and get on the bike a little bit or go get a heating pad or, or go and get a, a, a massage to just loosen their muscles up or get a stretch out by uh, one of the coaches in the, in the strength uh, room. So they all prepare differently, but there's a few things we do collectively. And, but once they get to the stadium, they're on their own to get their, their focus on what they have to do to get their job done. Here's what I want to know. Raymond, what do you do to get ready for the game? <laughs> Well, I just get geared up in my Rutgers clothes, and I just get here and just go Scarlet Knights. That's right. All right there we go. Good job, Raymond. Uh, he is a devout, devout fan. He, I've seen him like at games it. all the time. Terrific, terrific kid. He's into it. Now, when you look at playing a team like Michigan State coming in this week, um, Certainly, we know that they're ranked. Uh, they're a top five team. Uh, they were played very tight this past weekend by Purdue. Uh, what's your overall take on Michigan State and, and where they are and, and what Coach Mark D'Antonio uh, has been able to achieve with them so far this year? Well, they're 5-0. and oh. uh, So they're, they're good. They're good. Uh, they don't put down in the, uh, in the score that played very, very tough by whoever. Um, they did what they had to do to win the football game. They're a solid football team in all three phases of the game. On defense, their front seven can, can stop the run and they can rush the passer and they got a number of sacks and I think they might be right at the top of the league at, at, in sacking the quarterback. They've got some DBs on the back half who aren't scared to play press coverage, who you've got to use great technique to get, to get off of their press coverage and to get yourself open. The quarterback standing there and take a hit in the face and deliver the ball. He can put the ball in the small windows. They've got two really good tailbacks. Uh, one's a red shirt freshman, one's a true freshman, and they, they rotate them in and out. Then they got another third guy behind them that's not, that's not a slouch either. Um, and they got a big physical offensive line. They got a kid, number 12, that runs a speed sweep that's got legitimate speed that can also stretch the field in the passing game. So they present, and beyond that, offensively, they're going to give you pro style they're going to give you read zone they're going to give you spread they're going to give you unbalanced formations so they're going to give our defense a lot of things that they have to prepare for because those things are on the film and they may come up with something special just for this game uh, so uh, on defense they play solid defense they're just going to line up they're going to give you some pressures but they're going to line up and, and, and just try to manhandle you and play physical with their front four people and the linebackers playing downhill on offense, they're going to scheme you and power you at the same time. And on special teams, they're going to play solid. Playing a quarterback like Connor Cook, you know, he's, 
he's pretty much seen every type of defense you can throw at him. You know, I believe he has the most wins now in Michigan State history. How important is it going to be to get pressure on him and be hitting him in his face? Because, you know, like I said, he saw pretty much seen every blitz, every type of different coverage, but now getting pressure on him and keep on continuing to hit him and making him deliver the ball. It's real important. And it, that's with any quarterback. You want to make him uncomfortable back there, make him move his feet, make him wary that you're going to, that someone's going to bear down on him and, and continue to hit him as, as he delivers the ball. And pass rush and, and covering receivers, they, they work hand in hand. The quicker you can get to the quarterback, the less time that the, the defensive backs have to cover in the back half. So if, if he's got a long time to throw the football, then the defensive backs have to cover longer, which is uh, just by the rules of, uh, of the game, it's, it's, it's just hard to cover somebody for longer than five, six, seven seconds. So mm -hmm. you, 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 you need to have a great pass rush. You need to push the pocket, keep them closed in, keep them contained. And the guys on the back half have, just have to be disciplined and, and play their keys and – and rally to the football when the ball is thrown and make the throws contested throws. Our telephone number, 855-FLOOD-44. That's 855-356-6344. Dial up now. Get in your question for Coach Norris Wilson as Rutgers prepares for Michigan State. Going back to their pass rush for a second, uh, Keith Lumpkin was asked this week, earlier this week, you know, are there different things that you can do to try to uh, counteract that, whether it's getting rid of the ball quicker, whether it's making sure that uh, you're exceptionally um, successful in the run game as far as trying to slow them down. And he, he just said it's just our own execution. It, you don't do anything fancy. It's just executing your personal assignment. When you look at a team that has put up that those kind of numbers in sacks so far, is that the way you have to approach it and not try to think about getting too cute, you know, so to speak. Keith's right, and, and your question to him, or the question that was to I don't know if it was your question. It was my question. Your question to him also goes to a uh, just a school of thought that you have to change up what you're doing. You can change your launch point uh, by moving the quarterback. You can have some quick game where the ball's out quick. Uh, your run game, if you're having a successful run game, they just can't tee off and, and throw their ears back. You can have Running backs in the backfield, chipping guys back onto the tackle. So you got two people on them. You can slide to the best pass rusher. You know, there's a lot of things you can do. But over all the things you're talking about doing, it's still going to come back to what Keith said. You're going to have to execute. And it's, it's really not about their pass rush. It's about our pass protection is what it's about. And it's about our run game, our pass protection, about how we – utilize the different launch points for the quarterback. Those are the things that are going to help us be successful against their pass rush. Now, with that in mind, uh, sorry, Eric, I just want to follow it yeah. up for a second because in talking to some of the linemen, uh, I think it was Dorian who said in particular, I asked him where they felt like they had maybe developed the most this year, especially with three younger guys there. Feels like the pass protection has really improved during the course of the first four games. Would you say the same thing? I agree with that. They're doing a good job passing things off. They're doing a good job communicating with one another. Uh, the offensive line has to they, – they have to actually love each other. They have to understand, have, have a feeling, I know what Chris is going to do when I see the guy lined up there. And I can react to, to how he's going to play and just have anticipation. They've got to play as one unit and not five individuals. And I think they're doing a good job developing into playing as one unit. Everyone knows, you know, in the Rutgers program, running the ball is the main thing that you need to do to get the offense going. But what actually goes into the running game when you see some team like a Michigan State on film? Well, running the ball is, is a tough job. Uh, yeah. every, everyone has something to do. Um, the backs have to, have to make sure they read it right and, and they see it, how, how the line is blocking it. Uh, Sometimes you have to run a, a – the ball has to be run for better than the uh, – the play was blocked. Uh, the backs can do a good job bringing uh, tacklers to the blockers. You know, if, if you run against the blockers' leverage, one, you're going to get a holding penalty, and two, you're going to tear the guy off the block. So we talk about that all the time, how to set, set guys on to the blocks. Uh, the linemen just have to strain. It's a strain game when, uh, in the run game. If you've got to run and kick somebody out, you've got to run and kick him out, and you've got to dig him out, and he's not going to – you have to move somebody against their will. Uh, if you got to double someone out of there, you, ju you just got to hunker down and you got to dig them out. 
So there's no more joy uh, for an offensive lineman and having played offensive line years ago than to look up on, on the scoreboard or look at the stats after the game and say, hey, look, we just put 25, 30 rushes on and, and we average five, six, seven yards of carry. And we had a couple of big plays in there also. So pass protection is great. Throwing the ball down the field and having big plays and having everybody jump out of their seat is fantastic. But if you can put a drive together where it's, it's nine plays and you ran the ball, eight of them, you know, that, that's what make offensive linemen feel good. Mm-hmm. We'll step aside, take a timeout. We've got time to get your calls in at 855-FLOOD-44, 855-356-6344. Tweet us your questions at Rutgers Radio, and also if you're here in attendance at Quaker Steak in Lubin Edison, please come on up, get in your question for Coach Wilson. We'll take a timeout. This is the Kyle Flood Show. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and barn that's open all year round, even in the winter. Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size, dining in or to go. Quaker Steak and Lube, 561 Route 1 in Edison, 732-777-WING. Hey, Chris Carlin here, and as the voice of your Rutgers Scarlet Knights, I see the fans' passion for our hometown team come to life every Saturday in the fall. UPS shares this same passion for helping businesses turn a challenge into a solution because they're not just in the shipping business, they're in the problem-solving business. Visit ups.com slash solvers to see how UPS can help your team find the winning formula. UPS, official logistics company of Rutgers Athletics. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. This commercial is brought to you by Brother International, the makers of fax, printers, multifunction printers, scanners, sewing, and embroidery machines. Brother is always at your side. You can make business cards with your name. Print from hiking, hang and frame. Sew some shades, block the sun, keep out creepy peeping toms. With Brother at your side, always good in time. You got it, Brother. So they both match, no more mess, make the best, label all the leave that stress, brothers always undercover and always around. A hundred six years, better keep on counting. You got a brother, got a brother at your side, and uh whatever follows always at the big time. With the brother at your side, with the brother. Got a few more minutes on this week's edition of the Kyle Flood Show. Rutgers and Michigan State this coming Saturday night at High Point Solution Stadium. As a coach, do you like the night games? No. <laughs> sitting around all day. It's gonna nuts. <laughs> You're sitting around all day. I wish we could play them all at 10 a.m., get a pregame meal at 6 a.m., kick the ball off at 10, be home by 3 maybe. But, you know, I, I told the guys last week before we went to the hotel, this is, before we went to the game, I said, here's the deal. Here's the great part about playing at noon. When you win that noon game, they show your score all day. Yeah. <laughs> all day on the bottom line. They got everybody in the nation has got to look at your score. When you play the 8 o'clock game and when everybody turns off TV and go to bed. That's, so. why, that's why I was actually going to ask you that <laughs> earlier, too. Because, you know, some coaches, they're like, I love the 8 o'clock game because we can prepare all the way up into the game. But then you like – 12 o'clock game, because you said you get to, after you win, you get to go home and relax. But I wanted to ask you, what does the blackout game mean to you? Blackout game means a lot. You know, it, it's, a, it's a time, someone we've thought that, you know, is a quality opponent. We're going to go out. We're going to wear our black jerseys. Our fans are going to come out and wear, wear black. And, and we're going to go out and, and we're going to test ourselves against who we think is a quality opponent. And we're going to go out there and put our best foot forward and do everything we can to, to bring the win home. Not that we don't do that every week, but it, it's a special game for us mm-hmm. when we, we, we tab it as the blackout game, and I think we picked a good opponent to have the blackout game this year. Is, is, uh, it has been a couple of years, so I'll ask for a little sneak preview. Is family on the back of the black jerseys again this year? I do not know that. Mr. Kuzniak <laughs> doesn't allow anyone 
does not allow anybody to see it. He does not allow Maybe the head coach has seen it, but I have not seen it, the jersey. Okay. That's, he's referring to Mike Kuzniak, <laughs> outstanding uh, equipment coordinator at Rutgers. Um, all right, so we'll just have to wait and see for warm-ups on Saturday night for that. That's right. When you have that time all day, and like Eric was saying, some coaches like it because you can pre prepare right up into it. Are you a coach that believes that it's possible to over-prepare? You can't over-prepare, but you can, you can talk at them too much. You know, sometimes you just got to let them go and just, you know, make sure you've covered everything and if you, if you've covered it twice. But to bring them in a, a, a bunch of times and sit them down and say the same thing the fifth time, they, 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 I think they're going to tune you out after a little bit. Now, the great part about the 8 o'clock game, Eric, is this. Now, you're the national game now. There mm -hmm. might be two or three other games on, mm -hmm. but – you know, around the country, you're going to have a big audience. So you got a chance to, to go out and, and impress some folks. Uh, if, if you're in a situation where you're trying to climb the pole, you can impress the folks at the end of the year where they say, hey, remember we saw Rutgers play at 8 o'clock and they put on a good show and all the fans came out. You can impress some bold people. You can impress recruits. You can let every, all your recruits know, hey, look, we're going to be the 8 o'clock game. And uh, most high school games that aren't on Friday are early on Saturday. So if you're playing a noon game on Saturday, some of the kids you're recruiting might be playing at noon or 2 o'clock on Saturday also and miss you. So there's a lot of advantages to having an 8 o'clock game also. We got one more timeout we got to take. We'll come back. We'll try to get a couple of calls in. Should they warn? 855-356-6344. And tweet us at Rutgers Radio from Quaker Steak and Lubin Edison. This is the Kyle Flood Show. At AT&T, we're all about the perks, like getting $300 credit per line when you switch to AT&T with a smartphone trade-in and purchase of any smartphone on AT&T Next. That's three perks in one. Get all the perks when you switch to the network with the nation's strongest 4G LTE signal. AT&T, mobilizing your world. Limited time, each $300 requires a porting, eligible purchase, activation, and trading. $100 bill credit within 90 days. $200 trading credit or promo card. Taxes, fees, restrictions apply. Claim based only on national carriers. Average 4G LTE signal strength. See store for details. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lou. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2. And the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and barn that's open all year round, even in the winter give us a call 732-777 wing we cater events of any size dining in or to go quaker steak and loop 561 route one in edison 732-777 wing this is the rutgers img sports network Hey, Rutgers season ticket holders, are you tired of sitting on those hard bleachers with no back support? Then we have a deal for you. For a limited time, you can reserve a night cushion for only $60 for the season. That's less than $9 a game. Permanently attached to your ticket location, night cushions provide padded comfort for your back and bottom that's second to none. So don't wait. Visit nightcushion.com. That's nightcushion with a K dot com. Or call 800-729-0445 to reserve today. Honey, did you take care of the party rentals yet? I drove by Miller's Rentals on Route 1, but it looks like they've closed. We'll have to go someplace else. No, according to Facebook, Miller's moved to a bigger space at 160 Fieldcrest Avenue in Edison. But their phone number hasn't changed. 732-985-3050. Great, I'll call now. Miller's Party Rentals. Tents, tables, chairs, linen, staging, and more. Now at 160 Fieldcrest Avenue in Edison. 732-985-3050. Visit MillerRentals.com. Like us on Facebook and receive a discount on your first order. Go Miller's! All right, we got a few minutes left on the Kyle Flood Show with Rutgers interim coach Norris Wilson here at Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison, New Jersey on Route 1. Uh, i got to ask you a, a personal question because this is the last chance we really get to talk to you on the record about stuff. Um, every time I have seen you, not just recently, but over, I don't know, the last couple of years that you've been here, you always ask me the same question. What did you do for your wife today? Yeah. You always ask me that question. That's right. What did you do for your wife today? <laughs> I didn't tell her to go find a job. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell her right now? Oh, man. She hey, didn't Coach. look like she was ready to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Everybody I, got I, I tell you what Chris. I did for my wife today, and I've done this the last couple of days. All right. I pulled up some old pictures of me and her, or me and her and the kids, and I sent the picture to her via text message. Very nice. That is nice. Very nice. I see you, Coach. Uh, <laughs> but get off the personal stuff. I wanted to actually bring it back to the jerseys again. You know, I, we, I work with Chris during the games, and he's you know looking through binoculars down at the at the numbers and everything. Mm-hmm. Being on the sideline. Is it a lot easier to see the players' numbers, or do you get confused sometimes when you see some of the players going in and out the game for our team? It's easy to see the numbers, and also you know the body types and, and their mm-hmm. their uh, their mannerisms, so you know who's out there mm-hmm. by and large, and you know the guys that are going to play the majority of the snaps. So it, it's I, I can understand why how it could be hard for the people up top trying to t- trying to view the game, but mm-hmm. down on the sideline we know who. If a guy went down, we might not know who it is right away, but they'll call down from the box and say, hey, this so-and-so went down. You know, make sure we got somebody ready to go. Uh, I asked you this earlier in the week for the pregame show, but I'm going to ask you again anyway. Um, how do you balance when you have a group leaving, you know, standing in that tunnel here in a raucous crowd, which we expect it to be Saturday night, you're playing the number three team in the country. You've got the blackout. You've got everything surrounding this game. You want them to feed off the energy of the opponent, but at the same time, you don't want them to lose their heads. How, how do you possibly balance that? Talk to them about focus. You want them to go out and play with that energy, but be able to focus and channel that energy and not make foolish mistakes, Be still have the discipline to stay on side, to, to line up the right way. Um, if we come out and, and we go down and we're fortunate enough to go down and score, just remind them, hey, there's still a lot of football left. Uh, that energy is there's going to be an ebb and flow in the game and just be able to bring them back up uh, just in conversation and talking to them and, and get them focused in on what we need to get accomplished and just make sure everybody's on the same page. You don't want to don't want to zap that energy from them. So we want them to feed off of it and, and, and play and, and we want our crowd to make it a, a difficult environment for the opponent and to cheer for us and, and to be loud when the other team has the football. So the energy is going to help us. We're not going to. I don't think our players are, are going to allow it to be a distraction for them to have that energy to play with, and we're going to take advantage of every ounce of it. Is there a p- particular time that you choose as a coach to light the fire? I remember when I was playing, Coach Andy used to always be like, "Build the fire up, build the fire up from the last practice all the way until the game." But as a coach, is there a specific time that you choose to light the fire, and saying, "This is what you guys came here for. This is what you guys were meant to do for moments like this." Right before we come down to Hall in the Health Center. Mm-hmm. These, the past two uh, weeks, it, it was uh, right before we left the locker room down to State College it, it, and it, against Kansas. It was uh, right before we came down the Hall in the Health Center. I tell them exactly how I feel, exactly what we got to get done, and I remind everybody exactly why we're there. And I, I may specifically call on some players and, and have some things that I want to say to them that I'm really saying to everybody, but that's, that's when I choose to – to give them the inspiration I'm going to try to give them for the night. Coach, we appreciate you being with us the last few weeks falling in for Coach Flood. That's it? That's it. That's Folks, it. it's been great. I appreciate you coming out. Rutgers and Michigan State this coming Saturday night, 8 o'clock on BTN. And, of course, on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network as well. We want to thank... John Essick back in our Rutgers IMG Sports Network studios. Of course, Paul Schrager getting it done, our producer and engineer, and Colin Osborne as well, and our whole crew, Hasim Phillips, Jimmy Gill from the Rutgers Sports Information Department. Eric, good seeing you. We'll see you Saturday. Yes, can't wait. Good luck, Coach. We'll see you Saturday. Wear black. It is the blackout game. Rutgers in Michigan State at High Point Solution Stadium. Pack the point. We'll see you then. been listening to the kyle flood show live from the quaker steak and lube on us1 in edison on the rutgers img sports network the kyle flood show has also been brought to you by at&t mobilizing your world and by pepsi live in the moment the beat starts at pepsi.com pepsi live for now